This was a mistake. You think you've got what it takes to be a part of the best team in Los Angeles? It takes dedication, courage, and perseverance. Every drop of sweat and moment of sacrifice will push you forward, not just as an individual, but as a team. Make today the day you show the world what you're capable of. That was the LA Rams shooting a promotional video for the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department featuring the likes of Super Bowl winning coach Sean McVay, the offensive guru, star wide receiver Cooper Cup, and many, many more. And I'm going to tell you why I think personally this was a ginormous mistake. Let's go over a few things first. Our investigation found these deputies are allegedly encouraged to shoot people as part of their initiation. It's an open secret that deputy gangs have existed within the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department for decades. They operate as a gang. They commit crimes. They assault people. Currently, the most prevalent are the bandidos, comprised of mostly Latino deputies who serve predominantly African-American and Latino neighborhoods. These deputies do not want to be identified for fear of reprisal. Based out of East L.A., but you know members that have become banditos in East L.A. have been promoted and they've spread all over the county. How do they identify themselves? With a tattoo. Is there an initiation process to join the gang? You could say that. They could go from you getting a shooting or... You know, they do anything for these guys. You said they get shootings. What do you mean by that? If you get in a shooting, that's a definite brownie point. And according to these deputies, to justify those shootings, they plant weapons on suspects. There's been multiple occasions where they say, hey, we got a guy that has a gun and he's running from us. In reality, that person never had a gun. This is just a small sample of how the L.A. Sheriff's Department conducts business. Los Angeles, it is the country's largest jail system, but the feds say the inmates were not the only criminals there. Several former and current deputies with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department were just arrested as part of a major sting that targeted everything from corruption to inmate abuse. In addition to this. Just one year ago, during a traffic stop, a mother was punched in the face by a sheriff's deputy. Oh, there's more. Okay, here it is. This is um, a security video from the San Fernando Courthouse in Los Angeles County. This video was obtained by the LA Times, and it shows a prisoner, a man in handcuffs. Uh, you see in the blue trousers there and the white colored shirt. His, his name is Enzo Escalante. Um, it starts with him punching an LA County sheriff's deputy, and then you see him get wrestled to the ground. Um, then, though, uh, one of the deputies that wrestled him to the ground puts his knee on the prisoner's head and continues to kneel on his head for three solid minutes, um, which left that man on the ground alive, thankfully, but pretty well beat up. And if there's elements of that video that feel familiar to you, it's important to note the timing here. That incident took place last year on March 10th, March 10th, 2021 which happens to have been two days after jury selection had started in the very highly publicized trial of Derek Chauvin. And more. Okay? 
permitted. Journalist Cerise Castle reported in 2020, L.A. Sheriff's deputies beat up a security guard named Blake Anderson. She would go on to speak about her reporting and her journalism that went into uncovering the gangs within the L.A. Sheriff's Department. So let's do a quick run through of the gangs of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. All of them have stuff in common. You usually have official gang tattoos, a hand signal, and a way to join, usually by shooting or killing a civilian or doing something like falsifying paperwork. These are just a few of the gangs operating within the L.A. Sheriff's Department. Then there was former Sheriff Alex Villanueva seeing his popularity wane and being the ultimate slime ball who is in desperation of votes, he would pander and take photos with the Proud Boys. And this is what we learned. This morning, Vanessa Bryant declaring a heartbreaking victory in her lawsuit against LA County after first responders shared graphic photographs of her husband, Kobe Bryant, and daughter, Gianna, at the scene of the crash where they died. Vanessa posting this message on Instagram saying, all for you, I love you, justice for Kobe and Gigi. A federal jury awarding her $16 million in damages. Her co-plaintiff, Chris Chester, whose wife and daughter died in the crash, will also receive $15 million. The trial lasted 11 days, but it took the jury a quick five hours to find the county liable for tens of millions. Bryant's legal team accused several employees from the sheriff and fire departments of negligence and invasion of privacy, alleging first responders had abused their access to the crash site by taking and sharing gratuitous photos of the victim's remains, with one deputy allegedly showing the images at a bar. Then there was evidence coming forward of the Kobe Bryant crash site. The suit shared by Vanessa Bryant entailed disturbing allegations, including one deputy in particular took between 25 and 100 photos of the crash scene on his personal cell phone, many of which had no conceivable investigatory purpose and were focused directly on the victim's remains. In the lawsuit, Bryant alleges deputies Joey Cruz, Rafael Mejia, Michael Russell, and Raul Versalles shared photos of the helicopter crash. Via CNN, reports came out out of a second official going on the record to claim Sheriff Alex Villanueva did indeed cover up an officer kneeling on the back of an inmate's neck, and she says she had the receipts. Thus, the sheriff then blocked an internal investigation, because that's what normal people do, and the filing of assault charges against the inmate involved in the incident because Villanueva knew that if assault charges were filed against the inmate, his defense attorney would have gotten access to the video and the public could see it, the claim alleges. There is so much corruption that runs rampant within the LA Sheriff's Department. I understand that there are many on the right who did not like that Alex Villanueva was ousted, not on his own accord, but via the voters. And there is an attempt to try and do a little bit better, but we are on a tortoise's way of getting there. Considering what this department is and what they have done, I am not surprised that they would partner with the Los Angeles Rams to say, hey, look, we're the good guys. Come work for us. Give us another chance. Because this is eerily similar to, not even similar, it is what sports franchises will do publicly to try and curry the way that society feels. We saw it when the Kansas City Chiefs put Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, and other members of the Super Bowl winning Kansas City Chiefs in a PSA for them to hopefully pass a law that would have allotted taxpayer money to go to the Chiefs to renovate their stadium, Arrowhead Stadium. Chiefs owners were saying that we're going to move. If you guys don't do this, the voters rejected it, rightfully so. There have been other teams that have gone forward with PSAs to try and use the star power that they have within their ranks on their rosters to get the voters to shift the way they think about something. This is another part of it. And yet the history says otherwise. And why I think this was 
completely irrational by Cooper Cup, Sean McVay, and the LA Rams.